This is a boat. It's predominantly made out of fiberglass. This is a car. It's predominantly made out of metal. And this is a 1975 Reliant Scimitar. Don't really know what this is made out of. But what I do know, and before any clever clogs in the comments get in there first, this was once owned by a very famous princess. That's right, Princess Magogo Kadinazulu from South Africa once owned one of these. Now, <laughs> I know, I know you're going to be thinking, and you're going to be there hovering over the keyboard going, no, no, that's wrong. It's a different princess. Well, no, you're, you're wrong. And this clearly is a picture of her admiring. You can just, you can't, you can't quite see the full car, but you can just see the, the sort of roof line, the shape of, of, of the car, which you can obviously tell what it is, you know. Um, but you can clearly tell that that was her admiring her Reliant Scimitar. So what's the story here and what have I got myself into this time? Well, this car has been sat for a mind-boggling 31 years. Was it 32? Either way, a very, very long time. And as you can see, well, it's, uh, it's held up really well. I mean, there's no rust at all on the body. It's incredible. You know, it really is. Um, so, <coughs> what's, what's the story behind it? Well, apparently it was it sat in someone's garage and then parked outside the garage for a long time waiting for them to do something with it, which unfortunately they never got round to doing. Now, I was told by the previous owner that the engine was running not so long ago, so I'm quietly confident there. However, that's about as much as I know. So. We need to get stuck into this today. I want to get the, the car in the next couple of days at least, beautiful weather by the way, running and driving. Now it is roadworthy exempt. It doesn't have to be road, I'm mean, sorry, MOT exempt. So it doesn't have to have an MOT, which is great, which means I can get it safely running. So make sure the brakes are working well, the tires are good, lights work, all that good stuff. And then we can take it for a long spin on the road, which would be fantastic. Couple of hurdles in the way first though. Well, <laughs> it's been sat for 31 years. So uh, let's have a bit of a close look and see what we've got. I am a huge fan of greenery and this car has got it in abundance. I mean, that is real nice, but I don't know if you can tell if the light's hitting it right, but I reckon this bit there anyway, it's going to clean up okay. It's got four lights, that's good. But all this chrome stuff, I mean, that's, you know, a bit of pit in there, but it's great, isn't it? It all looks complete, you know, and all the, all the letters are there. Cars with four lights are so cool, aren't they? We need to, like, bring that back in a big way. Let's have a look at these wheels. Now, I know they're not original braces. I don't know what they are really, because, well, I've got a bit of experience with scimitars, which I'll explain later, but Dayton's, I've seen those before. But I like these wheels anyway, and they look in good condition, although very sort of badly, you know, yeah. Now again, I don't know if you can tell on there, but look at this, it's got lots of 
measles. Oh god, lots of measles over here! God, it's like braille. I wonder if I could read it. I have been sat for 31 years and should probably have been scrapped. Ah, cool, okay. That's interesting. More greenery down there. Okay. No rust. Incredible. Whoops. 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 Nice old scimitar badge. Do you know why it's called a scimitar? Is because that is an old, is it Indian I think, sword? And the sword's called a scimitar. Great. Bit of, bit of, bit of facts for you there. Whoops. Look at these. Whoops. So it would seem there's a couple of, uh, you know, the paint's a little bit flaky in places, but that's okay. Whoops. Whoops. That's okay. Old crumbs there, look, it's all not... Look at these seals, though. Uh, nice, look at that. Look at all these leaves rustling under me, look at this. Incredible. Right, so... Lock? What's this for? Thinks it's a 51 plate transit or something with loaded tools in the back. What's that all about? I've never seen that before. Why is there a completely different lock on it? So, right. If you've got any ideas as to what that's for, let me know in the comments because that's a bit weird. I've never seen that before. Another date in there. These tyres look to be I mean, they're in fantastic shape. They are holding air. Due to age, they're probably definitely 100% going to want replacing. Oh, whoops. Alright, this rear bumper's in really good nick. Look at that. Again, a bit of pitting. Twin exhausts! And a tow bar. Scimitar. All the badges and everything, they're all there. Nothing's missing. Look at these lights as well. Really good condition. Rear tailgate. Now we, uh, do have a bit of confidence that this is potentially going to clean up quite nice. There's a load of stuff in there. Can you see all that? Okay. Look at this as well. Ooh. You know, like when you peel a scab, it's kind of like that. I kind of just like want to peel the whole car. I need to stop doing that. Okay. Another right then, another Dayton. Oh god, look at this thing! Why? Guaranteed I'm going to be smashing a socket over that at some point in the next uh, little while. Oh, looks nice in there as well again. Zero corrosion to the body. Look at all these leaves! Woohoo! Whoops. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, look, a couple of little scabby bits there. That's okay, that's normal. Yep. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but like, you know, there is a shine. It's not showing on the camera, but there is a shine under there waiting to come out. I can tell. And a fourth Dayton. Aren't we looking? Look at this. Absolutely massive gash. Cool. Oh god. Uh, yeah, don't worry about all that stuff in there either. I mean, that is just totally normal. All that, you know, that's just it's only a little bit of surface corrosion. Just you know, don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. Why are you worried about it? I did get two sets of keys with this. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to do anything, but let's try, eh? Okay. Oh, ho, 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 it worked! 
Come on. Ooh. Ooh. It's a weird smell. That smells like like mixture of paint and inside one of those like plastic greenhouses that you get from B&M bargains. Do you want to have a look? Now the first thing I notice is that's missing, so that's great. Second thing I notice is look at this speaker. How cool is that? It looks like quite a nice little job as well. Fair dues. Now, this interior, I'm going to say, compared to the last car that we did, this is like immaculate, you know, in comparison. You know, there's not really any sort of cobwebs. What's the headliner? Oh my God, look at the headliner. Oh my God, look at that. I mean, it's, it's yellowed slightly, but I'm sure that's, you know, maybe someone smoking a hundred a day in here. Wow. This is cool, man. This is cool. I can tell, though, instantly with this, that this has been, like, brush painted. I'm trying to see if I can get, like, a, an area that you can see. Like it's been re-dyed or re like leather painted. Can you see on there? I mean that's okay. It's not the end of the world. It looks pretty smart, you know, when you sort of do this. Look at these sill plates. Scimitar. Can you see that there? Nice. What's in here? What's in the box? Oh, hello. Handle. Empty spark plug wrappers. Cool. Okay. Oh my god. I think this is the first time I've felt sunlight on my face since like 1994. Oh, this is incredible. Imagine what we could possibly do this year when we're, if it was sunlight compared to, you know, minus four and raining. This is amazing. I'm desperate to get in here to see what Princess Magogo was, was hoarding in the back. Uh, okay, whoops, yeah. Oh, oh. Doesn't feel like it wants to go any more than that. Oh my god. Oh god, what have I done? Oh god. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh my god, it's not attached. Oh, right, okay. Ah. I think that's as far as I can get the boot open. It doesn't actually look like it's attached. That look, that sort of looks, it's come off there. Just pop that. I don't know. This is not going to end well, is it? Right. What have we got? So. Ah. Need those. That's good. That's one of them. What's this thing? Oh, is that like a load bed cover? Oh, nice! Look at that! Ugh. Very smart. What else is in here? Ah. Oops. Ah. Car parts. It's just an air cleaner. But really nice. Look at that. Very cool. What else? Ah. Oh, that feels rusty. Oh, I don't know what that does, but it looks like it's desperate for the sandblasting. What's in here? Empty olive oil bottle. A full water bottle. Bodes well, doesn't it? Okay. There is also a spare tire in there. Ah, and a lid. Awesome. So again, I don't know if you can tell, but this is just like, there is no room here. This is very inconvenient. But yeah, that is no longer attached to the boots, which is a bit sad. That one is though, so one out of two, ain't bad. But look at that in there, spare wheel. 
pull it out of the way. Oh, just make sure we don't snap that off. Yeah, nice boot. Get it, you know, look, everything's complete. Yeah, it's good, this good clip. What's that? Okay, there's another one over there. It's probably for that load cover. Really decent. Is this car complete? No way. Okay. I don't know how well you can see on the uh, screen of how everything sort of flies out when you open the door. We've got a second door card and it's in position. This couldn't get any better. Look at this. Okay, that doesn't sound quite right. Does this call cool that work? <laughs> oh, nope. Just needs a little bit of WD-40. That's all. Look at this chair. Yeah. Some stuff under there. Okay. Gravy, baby. Ah, right. Let's just get go take stuff out my pocket. Right, we're inside. Nice. You can see like little bush strokes and things there, can't you? That's uh, yeah. Oh yes! Look at all that. God, there's loads of cable ties. Now, if you worked it out, they're like a pound each. You know, that's this car's practically free. Amazing. What about all this down here? Not 100% sure what that is, but I think it's overdrive. These look like electric window switches, what are they? It's not got electric windows, so what do they do? Okay. Handbrake. Does this work? Oh! Gears. Reverse, one, three, two, four. That's a weird way of saying it, wasn't it? Uh, does that work? One, two, three, four. Nice! Look at these diamonds here. Emeralds. Oh. That wants to stay on hot. Okay. Don't want to force that. I've just broken that, whatever that was. Screen. Car. Don't know what that does. Cigarette lighter. God, it's a really snazzy cigarette lighter, that, isn't it? How nice. Look at these, it's like a Spitfire. Oh, wow, look at that. Thinks it's a new Mercedes A-Class or something. Look at that. Dead snazzy, what does this do? Don't know. Uh, Toshiba. Oh, Toshiba. This was probably a good million pounds when it was new. I hope to God that works. Because that is a real nice bit of kit. Volts, times, fuels, miles. How many miles? 130, oh no, 13,784. So that's definitely 113,000, isn't it? Um, temperature, oil, and revs per minute. Look at that. Dead smart, traffic eight, a main beam, how nice. Now this wooden panel that these are all bolted onto here, I don't think that's actually standard because I do know a little bit about scimitars, which I'll yeah, go into a little bit later. But yeah, look, what's this? Okay, don't know what that is, but it, I don't think it's doing what it should be. More switches. That one's got the same symbol as that one. Weird, okay. GTE gets terrible economy. Yeah, completely perfect condition that. Excellent. I was just checking to make sure it did that. That's just that's a feature, safety feature of these cars. Bonnet lock. Oh, what's that there? Is that a little switch? Interesting. I love little switches in cars. What is that? What is it for? What is it doing? Stuff lying around, pedals, it's a good sign. Wow. Oh, nice. Look at this mirror. 
That does not look standard at all, but I like it. Okay, does it want to stay up? Nope. Bit of owl diet on that all. Teach it who's boss. Okay, cool thing. Right. Yeah. Shall we have a look in the stable? See how many horses we've got. Now, under here is an Essex V6 Ford 3 litre. 3 litre engine, cool, fast. Um, now, it's called an Essex V6 because when you start it up, it goes, Oh, hi, mate, how you doing? I'm from Essex, way. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool engine. I mean, on um, first impressions, it looks fairly complete, doesn't it? You know, I mean, I can't see, obviously, you know, the air cleaner's over there. It, oh, cool. Um, something in that, that's good. Um, but yeah, it looks, you know, to be all there. That's pretty decent. You seen all this here? Someone's done that. I don't think they came from the factory like that. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they didn't. What have we got over there? This vehicle complies with the seatbelt anchorage points. Great. Chassis number, engine number. Cool. All there. Yeah, dead smart. So this three litre V6 is pretty cool really because people associate Reliance with having one less wheel than this and having sort of 600 cc engines, which isn't really that fair, you know? I mean, Reliant did some amazing cars. This is definitely one of the most successful Reliants, you know? It, was, it, it sold in huge numbers at, at the time and it was a real, you know, it was a bit of a statement thing, you know, especially back in those days, it was quite expensive, you know? They did a few SEs, they did the SE4, SE5, SE6, and then uh, so on. This is an SE5A. Now, it's the borderline when it changed from SE5 to SE5A, so there is some differences which I'll go through later. And there's a couple of changeover things which sort of look a little bit SE5, but this is an SE5A. Um, so yeah, really, really cool. I've just noticed on the water pump there that something's been blocked off, but that's normal. Most cars are like that, aren't they? <sighs> That's probably why it has bottles for water in there. What's this? Brake and clutch fluid. Always need that. That's good. Expensive stuff now, you know. Uh, right. Do you want to have a look inside? So, yeah, that was what I was looking at before. Look at all this here. Very duty. Very nice of someone to spend all the time doing that, you know. Just leave that there, though. Look at this horrible looking like alarm type thing. I don't know what that is, if it is an alarm or something, but you know, all sorts there. Ooh, but nice. Yeah, so water pump down there, that looks like a bit of fun. So we're not gonna have any heaters, great. Maybe. Yeah, disco dancing. Look at that, that's really nice. If that all works, that's going to be killer because that's proper nice original stuff. That really, really smart. Uh, what else? What have we got? Yeah, so that's missing. But as you can see, there is a little bit of fluidity in there. Let's have a look down there. What have we got? A bit of oil weepage. And yeah, you can see the spark plugs. Look. A little bit newer than everything else, but I don't know when they were changed. Look at that oil filter, that is dreamy, is it not? That's been on since new, 100%. Right, what have we got here? What does it, oh, is that, oh, it's not seized, but it almost felt like it could have been. Look at the way he saved me the nuts, the air cleaner, dead nice. Let's go around the back here. Look at all this mechanism, what does all this stuff do? Oh, wow. can actually hear that, that, that sucking. 
a little accelerator pump there. <laughs> That's great news. Oh, nice. Okay. Might be well away. Little twin pot thing, you know. I mean, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a racing car. This thing, but it should hopefully go okay, providing that engine's a runner. Look at all these here. Look, there's six of them now. That's huge amounts of expense, isn't it? What have we got over here? I mean, these brake pipes. They, why is that loose? Is that loose? That is worrying. Okay. I mean, this whole thing here is. That's nasty. That is nasty. Well, that's going to be like. Hmm. Right then. Got a cloth. Where'd you get the oil from? Oh my god, oh my god, why is this bonnet in the way? <laughs> oh wow, that smells like going down south end on sea and, and what, your, what your fingers smell like after a nice night out there. Oh, uh, and quite a lot of petrol. <laughs> what about this thing in here? Oh, we've struck gold. There's water in the expansion tank. This is amazing. It's not full of like rust and debris. Oh, what about this? Get out! Yeah, again, you know, it's not, it's not all, it doesn't look too, it doesn't look too head gaskety, but uh, who knows? Yeah, nice thing, okay. What do we do now then? I mean, the sensible option, of course, is to just put a battery on it and stick, you know, 24 volts up it and just see what sets on fire first. Okay. Uh, uh, now I don't think the battery is supposed to sit like that, it's supposed to sit in there and it's supposed to be quite a tall thin one but well beggars can't be choosers can they you know. Uh, so let's see, let's see what happens when we put this on there and put that on there. I don't think there's a huge amount of charge in this battery anyway but Do you remember this battery? So far so good though. Nothing's burst into flames just yet anyway. I was told that this ran fairly recently so I'm quite confident to just chuck a load of juice in it and turn the key and see what happens really and then we'll get into fuel and air and spark and all that type of cool stuff but No frying noises, great. Right then, charge to boost. Yep, 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 okay. This is incredible. I've just gone to get the keys and when I came back, these lights were on. Am I breathing life into it? Come on, baby. Sounds like the side of my washing machine, that. Uh, right, okay. Oh, keys on the other side, thinks it's a bloody Mercedes Benz. Ah. Is this even the right key? What are you for? Was that the ambassador? Ah. Help if we use the right keys. Right, come on. Okay. Whoa. Did you hear that? Beep. 
Every time I twist the key, it's making a horrible noise. but I think it may have been like a rear wiper or something either way I, I didn't like it Wow, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Have you ever seen the film, Christine? How is that running? That... Has it got an external fuel thing? Is it... What the hell? That's incredible. Right, I think what's just happened is it's just ran off whatever was in there it's gone through the fuel pump into the carb and it's just run. Oh my god. I'm 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 like in shock. In comparison to how the last car I did, how long it took to get that running, and this is just barked into life almost instantly. Um, right, well look, this is supposed to be going to the fuel tank, so why don't I attach some fuel to that and we'll run it up again, eh? I'm, in, I'm just in total shock and I'm in total shock because it is like summer here oh my god this is nice <whistles> could this be the shortest resurrection in history for the car that sat the longest no way man right so I've just talked to Jerry Kenop and all I've done is just put the end of the fuel filter pipe which should be attached to the fuel tank into the jerry can because it's got a mechanical fuel pump on it. So what I want to do now is I want you to watch this fuel pump for me and see if you can see any fuel being sucked into there by the fuel pump and then we'll know that the fuel pump works. Yeah, tech easy, so simple. Right, let's see what happens now. I, I can see fuel. I can see fuel. Why did it run then and not now? Come on, keep going. Fill up that bowl. Fill up that car. Okay, okay. Let's oh, set a touch. Something's on in here.
so look at that and the web counter works oh my god We certainly got here a little bit quicker than I was expecting. Yeah! That's insane, isn't it? Let's have a quick game of what works and what doesn't. Okay, so, fan. <gasps> the fan works. Madness. Oh, come on, have we got tunes? What language are they speaking? That is a strange language. Have we gone back in time? Is this all a dream? That Toshiba works. This is... Is this the best car I've ever bought? Wow. What else? Uh, what else is there? Um, those switches aren't doing anything. Don't want to try the wipe. Okay, whatever. We'll try it. In for a penny, in for a pound, eh? I'm going home. Doesn't need anything. I'm just, I'm, I might drive this home. I found out what that noise was. Do you want to see? And as you can hear, it's slowly repairing itself. Oh my God. I just don't know what to, I don't know what to, I don't know what to make of this. Just in case you didn't see that from that angle then, let me show you this. I've got no windscreen wipers, but we have got wind windscreen washers, but there's no wipers. But, you know, there's the back wiper, so if we just reverse everywhere, it'll be fine. Oh my god. <coughs> ah. Right, should we do some lights? Let's check some lights. How can a car that's been off the road for this many years be so good? Right, have we got this ignition on? Oh yeah. Have we got indicator? Other indicator? Flash? Where's the headlights buttons? How'd you put that? Headlights? Wow. 
Can you tell me what, what just happened? Now, I don't know if you can hear that chainsaw as well, but there's somebody over there just dismembering bodies. It's weird, isn't it? But you can hear it there. It's the legs, probably. Uh, right, so what works, what doesn't? Should we get a running for this? <laughs> There's all this smoke coming from all of a sudden. It's a high performance flying machine. Hello! Right, oil pressure is saying 50, 50 watt? I don't know, but it's saying 50, which is right in the middle of the gauge, and that for me is good enough. The temperature gauge obviously hasn't moved yet, fuel gauge isn't moving and the clock well I'll let you know if the clock works but it's going to take a little bit of time to move, to, to move. and again the bolts are reading 12 and a half or something which is more than 12 isn't it right then so I've come inside the car so I can try two things one is the clutch one of the brakes now if this thing moves under its own power I'm just going to wash it and hit the road There's no way. Right then, what should we try first? Let's try. Let's try. Okay. Oh my god, okay. Absolutely jack shit. Um, absolutely nothing. There's no pedals there at all. They're just loose. Um, that clutch just feels like it's not attached to anything. Oh, I knew there was something. This would have been too easy otherwise. But we have got a stereo. Great. I wonder if it'll just move on the starter motor. Right, it moves on the starter motor so nothing's seized. Well, the clutch might be seized on, but there's no pedal there at all. Okay, this is where the hard work begins. Oh, I think it might be, it might be too hot now. Oh. Right, let's have a look. What's down here? Okay, so as you can see, there is no clutch and there is no brakes. So what's up there? Right, I can see, I don't know if you can tell, it's a bit dark up there, but I can see it going in and out of the master cylinder. Yeah, okay. Which fortunately for me is not under here because I was uh, I was dreading another 190E situation then. So let's have a look up top. Right, look at all this great stuff. I mean, this is definitely going to be the issue, isn't it? So, you've got a clutch, uh, cave, clutch, clutch master cylinder here, which looks pretty dead. See if there's any fluid in it. Right, okay, it's full of fluid. Yes, but still very dead. Brakes. Oh yeah, full of fluid, but no brakes. Right, so that leads me to think that maybe these two master cylinders are both dead. Because you can feel on the pedal when you push them, there's just no resistance or anything there. So I've got a feeling it could be both of those. So we've also got this here and we've also got that there, which is just loose. Which is odd, isn't it? Why is that loose? Yeah, look, that union there. Hmm. Now, this thing here is a wit. It, it's a bit odd. It's not like normal things. That's a remote um, servo. 
So when you press the brake pedal, it goes through there and it goes through a pipe into here and then it operates the servo there and you know, all this good stuff. Usually that is attached to the bulkhead and it pushes onto this through there, but this one does it via fluid. So something could be up inside here as well, but that wouldn't explain the clutch because that's a very separate system, I think. Looks like it, yeah. Interesting, 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 right. Let me make a plan. So here's my plan. Now, I am very fortunate to be near Chester. And in Chester, there is a place called Graham Walker. And Graham Walker, the guy himself, um, is a scimitar nut. And he's set up one of the UK's best, or the UK's best, scimitar parts place, reliant parts place. Um, and I know him very well, I know the place very well um, because back in 2014, 2015, I had one of these. Now, that was one of my first sort of delvings into YouTube and there's a couple of videos on the um, channel that you can see, very, very early old ones of me taking my SE5A Reliance Scimitar to the Nürburgring. Now, it broke down 14 times when I took it to the Nürburgring because of an Accus Bar Cognition thing, which I've mentioned in a different video, that we just couldn't buy know it was a new kit, it was just an absolute nightmare, um, until we just put foot back in it and it worked perfectly. Um, and also the middle fairing for the cock shaft went and it sounded like a well, it was, it was not good to drive, especially on the Nürburgring. And in that video, you can see where it actually breaks down in the Nürburgring um, on one of the corners. And thankfully, it fired up again and I managed to call it back. Otherwise, that would have cost me a couple of grand. Cool. But um, while I owned that car, I did get a little bit of a relationship with Graham Walker. Um, and uh, yeah, managed to get him to do some jobs on the car. And I learned a lot about scimitars from that. So. My plan now is to go down and see him, have a chat with him, and see what he thinks of all this master cylindery stuff, and see if he's got anything on the shelf that he can sell me, and I'll bring back here, and we'll have a go at just basically replacing it all and see what that does. Because uh, if it is just a case of master cylinders, I can change all those. If it's a servo, I can change that as well, all from there, so it's not like a, in a bad place or anything. And then it's just going to be a case of bleeding it up, potentially. So, right, let's fire up the tasty truck and head to Chester. All right then, roughly 600 pounds later, I'm back. Uh, what have we got then? Well, I got some 2050. 2050 oil. Man! It has gone up in price. Are they running out of crushed up dinosaurs or something? What's happening? That was so expensive just for oil. Anyway, I've got one of these. This is a, a clutch pipe. So it sends the fluid from the master cylinder to the slave cylinder. Got that just in case. The one on it's plastic. I saw that before, so I thought, let's just throw a load of money at it. I've got a new oil filter. Nice, because that one is very old, isn't it? This is a master cylinder. I think it's a clutch or something. I'm not really sure, to be honest, but it's one anyway. There's one of these fittings on there because I think we've got to change the fitting now to this thing. And he was telling me something like that. I'd, I'll understand it better when I'm doing it, you know. What's this? This is a another master cylinder. There you go, look. And he says I've got to change these rods as well. If you can see there, because they're different. But he says it'll work, you know, just change the rods. What's in here? Big metal bracket. And a nice shiny new brake servo. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't look anything like the one in it, but. <laughs> Okay, and then loads of other bits, amazing, right, uh, so what I'm going to do first is take the bonnet off, because 
I'm going to be able to access it load better when there's not a bonnet in the way. Simple science. Make sure I put all this somewhere safe so we don't lose it, like, I don't know, just in there, be fine. Success! Right here then. I'm going to get stuck into tearing all this stuff down and replacing it and doing all that cool stuff. So while I'm doing it, I just wanted to say a, like a humongous, like an earth shatteringly big thank you to everybody that subscribed. Over the last three months, I've amassed nearly 10,000 people who want to see me do this and have hit the subscribe button. And if you're, if you haven't hit subscribe yet, Please do, because that will really help me get there. And I mean, doing this stuff is like prohibitively expensive, man. I'm hemorrhaging cash at like a, a, a fantastic rate. So the more people that press the button and watch the things, then the, I can do this and then you can watch it. And it's just like a whole cycle. It doesn't cost you anything to hit subscribe, but it helps me because it's bloody advertisers. They'll, they pay for it. You don't pay for it. They pay for it. And then I do it. And then it's great, isn't it? And... Look at this little number. Oh, a bit of dirt on there. Tasty classics, yeah? So I just thought I'd make a few of these. I haven't decided on the, you know, what design or anything I'm gonna go with. I'm just trying out a few fresh garms. And then one day I might put them in a shop and then you guys can go on there and buy them and stuff and like stickers and things and all that cool stuff. Just to, again, help me out that little bit. Um, but I'm, I haven't quite got there yet. I'm still just testing them out. I'm seeing how well they wear and if stains wash out of them, you know, that kind of cool stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, how good they are. Because I don't want to sell you anything that's crap and then I haven't tested. So I'm just going to, you know, you just stay with me for a bit on this and then we'll we'll hook something up. We'll hook you up with some good, good things. Um, right, let's get stuck into this then. <laughs> Give you more than half a year If I could give you more than half a year on either side of every single word I write I found you in another line notice all the time it takes to just be I 
give you more than half of me That was a little bit of a bore lake, not gonna lie. I just, there's no hardware with it and hardware is America, American for nuts and bolts. So I've just had to use what I've got around and it's just like really fine thread stuff. I haven't got any fine thread nuts that would fit, just insane out of all the parts I've got. And these down here, these washers sort of, they got a little bit bent in because I had to cut all those off and then I didn't have any bolts that were wide enough and they're washers that I, did, I just I could have probably done better but time's ticking on. But anyway, it's all in, it's all fitted. I've got to do the pipes now which is going to be a little bit awkward because I've got to bend this one round to go in there and then I've got to get that one there into that one there and then connect that up to the clutch. Now unfortunately that is the wrong thing for that which is why he's given me this. So I need to find out where the other end of this is and see if I can get to that to change it over onto that. Yay! I've done an immaculate job here. There was a bit of brake pipe in the thing. Don't worry about that kink there. It's, it's absolutely fine, honestly. I'm not worried you shouldn't be either. Um, that brake pipe was in the kit, so I've used that instead of having to go and make my own because, you know, the sun is moving towards the bottom of the world and I need to get this. God, I'd love to see it moving. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, right then, so this pipe here, this red one, it goes from the clutch master cylinder all the way down here, around there, past under here and down into that bit far down there um, and operates the slave cylinder. Now, this is a BF, very expensive BF Goodrich hose, which is a replacement for this horrible plastic thing. So now I've got to try and get my head down there and uh, yeah, swap it over. Starting to get a little bit of PTSD from the last cemetery. Oh yeah. Now, I'm a little bit sensitive about the size of my jack. I did have a big one once and then it went and now I've got this little Halfords job. I've been, it's, it's been on the to buy pile for a while and uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, right, let's try and get some this in the air. Nice one jacket up on. Is there any structural integrity here? Oh, doesn't look like it, okay. Crunch, crunch, split, bend, break, ruin. It sounds like it's fizzing almost with, with, with rust. Smash, oh my God, please. Oh God, right, okay, it's coming down. Not huge amounts of structural integrity left there, but it's not, it's, it's fine, it's okay. Let's just try somewhere else. Mm. 
really solid there though. Run over my own head. Oh, yeah, <laughs> straight off. Come on, you beauty. Status update we are connected up. I've had to take my microphone off because my batteries are all winning out. This is my sixth battery of the day. It's bad, that isn't it? Um, I need to like reinvest in some more stuff, but I keep buying these knackered old cars. Uh, I've got this easy bleed kit, yeah, to like bleed brakes. If you know about cars though, you'll know that clutches are a different story altogether. And this one, I'm just hoping is gonna be good. I've managed to crack the nipple on the uh, slave cylinder. So I'm gonna just start pumping fluid into it and then close it off and then We'll just have to see what happens, you know? I mean, I, I could really do with someone else here. Um, so I could just, you know, do it manually. Um, but we'll give it a go. Just had an idea. I'm actually gonna try and back pump it. As in push the fluid back up into the reservoir instead of sending it down. See what happens there. Quick look, can you see the bubbles? So I've attached it with a bleed nipple and I'm pumping fluid back up and all the air is coming out so we could this could be genius I could be a genius I'm just going to let it do its thing for a bit and we'll see well I think I've done it anyway so I'm just going to go and wash my hands. Right, let's give this clutch a test. Ugh. The pedal's like solid stiff. Something's not right. So that's in gear. Which means the clutch is disengaged. Pedal feels normal, a bit stiff. I can't get it to engage. Right then, well, this is the exact outcome that I didn't want. Now, yeah, the clutch pedal feels like a clutch pedal, which is 
fantastic news but in gear the clutch is not attached to the engine so there is nothing between the engine and the gearbox oh what a nightmare so i don't know what's happened there if something's just broken split apart the plates just snapped in half or something but i've got the feeling that it is gearbox out you know you should not be able to turn the engine over while the car's in gear you know Works though. Yeah, it's almost as if the clutch is always engaged. So that, I wonder, wonder what else that could mean. Maybe slave cylinders stuck in one position, slave cylinders stuck with the clutch open. if the clutch was seized or if it had broken apart I'd, you'd think I'd hear something I'm genuinely it, it doesn't take much to confuse me I know that but I am genuinely confused confuzzled uh, two things could have happened. The most likely one, because I didn't hear anything go bang, is that the clutch is stuck engaged. Because I can start the car when it's in gear and I've just got, it's not pushing the gearbox around at all. The other option is the gearbox is blown up, the input shaft or something on the gearbox has just gone bang. But you'd have thought I'd have heard that or felt that or something, but I didn't. So the theory is, is that the clutch is stuck engaged. So there's a couple of things I can try there without taking the gearbox out. The first one is to take the slave cylinder out and see what's happened there. Because the slave cylinder may be stuck in the out position, you know, as in like engage clutch fully if that's the case we may just need to put a new slave cylinder on it or free that one up my only issue with that is that it feels like a clutch pedal you can feel the spring and the pressure plate you can feel everything it's really really weird it feels like an excellent clutch pedal so that is just bizarre i don't know what's going on there and it's not like nothing needs adjusting you know it, it it's because there's player you know I'm really really confused i'm hoping it's something slave cylinder because i can get to that but the sun is about to set and uh i think that's going to do us for day one so join me in a few seconds for you anyway for day two <sighs> day two and uh yeah <clears throat> overnight i was sort of going through in my head the process of how a clutch works and uh, I've got a couple of options and the first most easiest one is to take the slave, the slave cylinder off and hopefully it's stuck in the engaged position. I can't, I'm, I'm still trying to work out what engaged or disengaged means. Does it engaged mean it's running the gearbox? Does disengaged mean it's running the gear? I can't, I just can't work it out in my head. But um, yeah, so essentially the clutch is stuck on. I'm going to pull the slave cylinder off now and we're going to see if that fixes it. <sighs> the plot thickens. I've, I, did, I, I could see the end of the slave cylinder where it pushes on the arm for the clutch. And I tried to move it and it was solid. So I've just released the nipple on the slave cylinder, spurted a load of fluid out and the arm moved back. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? 
I think. Is that cool? I don't know. I'm going to see what the clutch pedal feels like now. Safety. Uh, let's see where that's going. Is that moved? I wonder if she's going to fire up today without the uh, without the boost back on it. Where's the keys? That's a good thing. Let me explain what's happened. I think by back pressurising it, I've potentially put too much um, juice in the system. I don't know, something like that. And then I've released a bit of the pressure and now the clutch has freed itself, come off again. And I've just started it in gear and it lurched forward. And then I put my foot on the clutch and started it again and the engine span round without it moving forward which potentially means the clutch is working. I need to get it running. And to do that, I need to put it full of petrol again. As simple as that. That was like a 30 second job. For the first time in 31 years, this Reliant Simulator has moved under its own steam. How good. No brakes whatsoever. So that's the next thing to address. So happy about that because if, if the clutch plate was like seized solid or smashed to bits I'd have had to take the whole gearbox off and it would have been a nightmare. But the clutch seems to be okay. It's just maybe me giving it a little bit too much of a good bleed. So if you're going to back bleed it then maybe just release a little bit of the pressure afterwards. I don't know. Trial by fire. And I've also found out the exhaust leaking from the manifold to down pipe gasket there so I'm going to see uh, if I can get hold of a couple of those quieting it down a touch <sighs> right I need to think of a plan about what's next for this thing okay we're getting super close here um, there's a couple of things that we still need to do before we can take this on the road one is brakes two is tyres and three there's three things is fuel system. Now I can just run it off a jelly can under the bonnet but that's not going to get us very far because she's probably going to be a fairly thirsty girl. Uh, so we're going to have to see what the inside of the fuel tank's like and see why it was cut off there and all that sort of good stuff. We also need to let the engine idle for a bit, let it run and just see if it you know, heats up and if it's got a fan and all that sort of stuff because I don't want it overheated halfway down the road. Uh, so yeah, there's a few bits to do. The first thing I'm going to address is the brakes. To do that, I need to get it up on blocks and get the, uh, all the wheels off with these keys and the wheels. Great. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that. 
All right, well, these very, very old tyres are in the back of the tasty truck awaiting transportation to have some new ones fitted to these lovely Not Wolf Race wheels. And uh, yeah, I think I've done a bit of digging on the date code, and I think they're 1981, which is an old tyre. But yeah, and I've also put a little bit of uh, MOT in a can on those bits there, just in case anyone wants to look a little bit deeper. <coughs> uh, yeah, so I've given each bleed nipple a good dose of plus gas, and I'm going to get my drain pan under the front here and I'm going to drop the oil out of the engine and we'll replace that and then I'm going to get the easy bleed on the brake system and hopefully be able to undo these bleed nipples I'm going in yeah. oh my god such fantastic condition right there you are uh, what size are you going to be? Like a 24? 22? Ah! Come on, Now, if you're wondering why I'm not using the two post ramp that I've got in there, so am I. <laughs> Look at all these holes. Uh, which way is... that's tight, isn't it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice! Didn't even really get covered in oil. It's easy on your back. Look, it was only it was only really rusty on the on the top. It was fine there. Over there. Should have just spun it round, left it on. Oh well. Oh, safe. Don't worry about the safe. Okay, is that finished draining? Yeah, kind of. it's going to appreciate this because that was about 400 quid for that kind of oil now i have noticed this engine's got quite a bit of blow by right and that's where the gases escape down the piston rings go into the crankcase and they've got nowhere to go apart from out of these little holes in this thing which is fine but this one's got it quite bad and my last submitter the reason i sold it was because it was chronic that the blow by um and at 113,000 miles, it's probably going to be pretty similar story here. But that's not a problem for me. And I'll explain why later on. Perfect. About an inch over the maximum line. That's where you want it. <laughs> Great. Right then. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run her up. And I'm going to let it idle and I'm going to watch the temperatures and things like that while I'm bleeding these brakes. So yeah, join me afterwards and we'll see how she's done. What, what incredible weather. I might have to get changed into my bikini shortly. Like and subscribe if you want to see that. Um, and uh, yeah, available on my OnlyFans. Uh, the brakes are somewhat there. That's pretty good. It's good enough for me for now, um, which is fantastic, isn't it? Because that was our big main two things, the two pedals, and now I have both pedals. We are fantastic. The fuel tank is made out of metal. I've given it a knock and it's made out of metal. So now I'm going to get amongst that and see if I can sort of 
push some stuff through it and see what's in there if there is anything in there and then while i'm out in town getting tires i might see if there's anything else that i can buy to help me sort this fueling system um this is hot tops holding up really well isn't it a couple of days of serious abuse uh right let's crack on so this pipe here should be attached to the back of the car where all the fuel's supposed to live it's not supposed to live above the radiator while i was running it as well by the way that fan i don't know if you can see down there works off that switch and everything kept kind of okay so you know it, time will tell when i'm actually on the road but for now that's a pretty pretty good result uh right so can you see a fuel pipe i certainly can't right then what about under there probably Now, interestingly here, I have actually found the other end of this fuel pipe and it was just like a plastic pipe. Interesting. I've put it into this clear bottle. I'm going to send some air into the tank now and we'll just see if anything comes out of there. Did anything come out? No. Okay. What about going backwards? difficult because I need my ear over there and I need to push this thing here but it does feel like it's free it does it does it does Vicky all right I'm gonna See, this line between the fuel tank and here is free, so I can put some fuel in it. But if you could put that in there and then just give it one of those, I can go over there and listen if we get something. Because so I could, if it's free, I can just pour some fuel in it, you know. That's incredible, that is actually free. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. Um, Right, under that, under that pipe, this pipe, yeah, I'm going to do it that end and just have a feel of the pipe, see if there's any. Yeah. Any pressure? Nothing. Can't feel anything. Interesting, okay. Attach that to it, put a new fuel filter on it, and see if it pulls anything through. You've got one again. Yeah, I've got, got one. I've got, got one, mm, I've got one to stay from whatever that's called. Sentimental business. Sentimental fuel. Or mental. Alright, let's chuck some fuel in it and see what happens. I'm going to keep my hand so it keeps the hair on my face. I could just get a haircut, like, but. No, you're too tight. Too tight for that. I don't know, you'd have any cuts and I'd have it as a transfer. Just one side. <laughs> Just see if it pulls anything through there. Well, the filter's shifting anyway. Well, that's it. I thought, you know, let's just use that shit one. Because I know it works anyway, Liz. Just have them. Yeah. I've started there, I look my way round. <laughs> right. Ooh, spider! <laughs> Dangerous fucking thing, spiders. <laughs>
you see that? It definitely yeah. fucking did, doesn't it? it definitely well, it's did. clearer. It, it, it's not clean, but it's, but, but it's definitely clearer than the filter. So it's, it's drawn the, the shine through. As far as results go, they don't really get much better than that. The, the, it's, 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 you know, sucking. It's sucking fuel. So this is going to get changed. Going to get chain, you know, bit of a jubilee clip, and you know, maybe do this bit here and whatever. You know, who cares? But for now, let's go get some tyres. I'm back. And uh, God, that is two hours every time to get into town. But I must have like won the pools or something. Cause look at this. Good year, good year, good year, good year. Fucking hell. Right, let's pop them back on this thing and get it on the deck. Doesn't that uh, kind of look uh, better? Cool, right then. So I think we should just take it for a little spin around the yard and see if it goes into gear and it stops, you know, that kind of cool stuff. So I need to move the tasty track and then we'll go. Just put another can of fuel in it and it's now time to just go for a slow and steady little trundle and see if things are working. So uh, I'll catch you when I get back. about all that smoke that's that standard on these um, no brakes whatsoever good so I think that's what I need to get stuck into next but the clutch gearbox wheels tires all working exciting so yeah I now need to try and do some brakes on it really so uh, wish me luck right then now the real problem that I've just discovered is that there is not really enough room for me to do all the pedals properly with my boots on. So I'm going to have to like come in my, you know, my stilettos or something. 
tomorrow. Um, but today's drawing to a close. I've kind of got a bit of a pedal there now. The brakes are working. Um, my good friend Dickie in there has just helped me. So um, I'm going to take us for a little spin around the yard. <laughs> just a little clutch related issue. Working all of a sudden, the clutch is working. Then, what the hell? Okay. <coughs> Okay, here we go. Clutches are only for show anyway, you don't actually need them. As long as you've got like a bit of a clutch, that's all that matters. We are rolling. We are rolling. Rolling on the river. Is it river or is it railroad? Rolling on the railroad. I don't know. I'm just trying to get a little feel of it because to do what I want to do with this car, I've only got half a day tomorrow. That's it, I need I need like more day. Oh god! Okay, so the brakes are working, but all I seem to be doing when I press them is pressing my other foot into the firewall. I need little ballerina feet. Did people have smaller feet back in 1975? My old one wasn't like that though, because I'd have remembered. Ugh. And I think that the... Um... Oh, what's going on here? It's wanting to steer right all of a sudden, and I'm worried that the that brake might be stuck on. is definitely stuck on. Oh, and now it's free again. Right, so that, that caliper's coming and going back to life. It's not quite sure what it wants to do yet. But yeah, I, I've got a bit of a plan for this thing, and it's quite an exciting plan. But... I've only got half a day to get this thing up and running properly. God, it goes like a stuffed rat. Interesting. The sun 
is starting to set on day two on the reliable right <laughs> reliable reliance project which i'm now naming it so let's look at the positives we've got a fuel system that seems to be working i still need to do a little bit of maintenance there need to tie the battery down but that's all working it seems to be charging but again i need to get my little machine on it to check need to put all the filter and stuff back on there need to put the bonnet back on now i could do with bleeding the brakes again so i'm gonna to have to find someone that will help me just do those once more and i'd like to do the clutch as well but it's not massively necessary i think it's just it's coming back to life a little bit there on its own and i need to wash the thing get it looking a bit more presentable get the polisher out make it look all shiny because i've got an idea hmm right then i'm gonna get all this stuff done and then join me back tomorrow and we'll see where we're up to it's the beginning of day twa and uh well where are we up to wouldn't you like to know okay i'll tell you i stayed a little bit late last night and i got a few jobs done mainly putting the bonnet back on which doesn't doesn't quite fit properly but anyway um i've also sorted out the exhaust leak ish had to drill one of the studs out and put a new bolt in it and just basically clamp it all back together so that's great that sounds a lot more road legal um now if i want to drive this thing on the road um i need to make it look the part so i'm about to get the pressure washer out and we'll see what we can do with it i've got a couple of hours now before i need to do what i need to do so let's give it a go
now underneath the, the water you can see it's still quite faded so I might try and give it a quick polish you know see if we can bring that up get the DA on it dead fast nice now I want to do another quick brake bleed and there's a couple of other little finishing jobs just to do all my tools and stuff I want to get stashed away in the back of the car I've got a spare battery on charge there because I don't quite like the look of the alternator and yeah we're gonna go for a road trip but where are we gonna go Ben where would you take a scimitar well I guess you're gonna have to wait and see Door shut. <laughs> oh, that's a. <sighs> Seems to be sat on the fucking seatbelt. So, I'm sat in the car with all of my camera gear, all of the tools and everything that I've used over the last two days to get this thing roadworthy, essentially. We've got excellent brakes, excellent clutch, the engine feels strong, the lights work, tyres are nearly new good years, I mean, fucking hell. What more do we need? So, where are we going? Well, that's a good question. How well does that start? It's a fantastic question. No, no, it really is. But I'm not going to tell you right now, because the first thing we need to do is see if it even makes it to the petrol station, where I'm going to fill it up and pour some of this stuff in it. Oh. my trainers because my boots didn't fit and it's helped a lot just quick brake check there everything's good we're showing 60 oil pressure now that I've changed the oil Charles go past in his tractor. <laughs> oh, she feels sprightly, man. Real sprightly. So we're going to go right out of here today to the petrol station indicator. I've 
been thinking, what, what could I do, you know? What would be a fitting tribute to this thing that has willed itself back together? It's wanted to go on the road again. After 31 years, I know I keep saying it, but wow, that's a pretty long time, you know. Oh my God, it is, it's driving like a car that was, you know, running and driving around town yesterday. Oh man, apart from the bonnet is popped because it was a little bit fiddly earlier to get in. And I think it's starting to seize up, so I just want to sort of leave it. When I took the bonnet off and put it back on, I should have marked it up or something because I've not quite got it exactly where it was. And I haven't got the time to be fiddling about with it, you know. This engine feels good. Nothing seems to be knocking. Nothing seems to be rattling too much apart from the insides of this door. Steering seems, you know, fucking surprise, overwhelmingly surprisingly good. Fuel her up. Doesn't she look great? Right, let's put some juice in it. Okay, so it says we're an hour and 26 away from Tamworth, right? 69 miles now I am acutely aware this thing has not been on the road for 31 years and we're about to drive it 69 miles without even giving it a proper test uh, I'll be fine I'll be fine funny noises <laughs> Cool. Okay, and Al, she wants to go. What's here? Al, she knocked the mirror over. This was going that fast. Will it make it? I mean, it seems to be going okay so far. I'm feeling I'm going to pull over soon. Maybe give it five miles. And we'll just check everything over and just see, see what she's like, you know. See if uh, everything's in one piece. See if anything's hot, if anything's cold. So good though. Just tried the overdrive, but I'm not quite going fast enough yet, so I'll, I'll try that again a little bit later. Got some sweets in case I get broken down. speed camera coming up. Fortunately the speedo seems to be working perfectly and it's not you know doing that like a lot of these old Smith's gauges do after a while but it seems solid as a rock. And the mileometer is working it's showing me how many miles I've done. 5.6 so far that's exciting isn't it? That's hilarious. 
hilarious. I've just passed a screen camera that someone um, looks like they're set on fire. <laughs> Whoops. Don't condone that sort of thing, obviously. Bad, you shouldn't damage things. But if you are going to damage thing, something, the speed camera is like top of the list, isn't it? She's still a tiny little bit sticky getting in and out of gear, but I think all you need to do there with a the clutch is just spend a bit more time on it, you know? Clutches need time. Time. I'm Bane. We're in traffic. Just can't escape it. Even when you're a YouTube person. Um, oh, let's try and tighten this one out. Incredible, I've just fixed that mirror. What else can I fix while we're sat here? Nothing, because everything works. It's good, isn't it? Isn't it? It's 25 past two. Um, we've got about an hour and a half to go to Tamworth. I want to get back, hopefully, before it gets dark, which is never going to happen, is it? But the reason I've done this, and the reason I've decided to go on this expedition, if you like, is because I really want to try and do more of this with these tax and MOT exempt things. God, I've had brand new cars that don't drive as well as this. Um, and I thought this was a good opportunity to start and to trial it and to see how it actually goes over here because it is. Sunshine! Nice. We're on a little bit of an expressway now and the uh, there's no overdrive, which is fine because I'm doing 60 mile an hour. Oh, sorry, is that 50? 50 mile an hour at 2,500 RPM, which is more than enough for what we want to do. Any more than that would be silly, wouldn't it, really? It's, it's it's coping so far so good. Is this is this dumb? Is this a dumb thing to do? Should I not be doing this? I mean, I've driven a lot of uh, sketchy cars in my life, and you know, I didn't realise at the ripe old age of 35 that this is this is where I would be heading. You know, driving more sketchy cars. Thought I'd be rolling around in, you know, new, new Jags and things now, but oh god, get into gear!
Set out on the open road Same old place you always used to go When you were younger Speeding through a 50 song Like your dad before You didn't even notice Forget that it leaves you feeling down and filled with some regrets. All this trick of the memory, we call them good old days. All the sweet in the moment is poison for you. you back, back to where the summer never ended. Although it's easy to remember, it's as easy to forget, that it leaves you feeling down and filled with some regrets. All this trick Status update, engine, very good. Brakes, <coughs> clutch. <sighs> ah, the Wellington. Home to every broken down Reliance Scimitar. So, status update number three. I'm, I'm using my tools a lot more than I maybe thought I would have. Uh, um, so, this battery is now dead and I've just had to put this one in. I'm just going to tie it up now. The uh, problem being that the clutch is just like non-existent. Yeah, well, it, it's kind of there, it kind of, but it's just not enough to get it. When the car's running, it's not enough to get it into first. Nightmare. I wish I'd bought my easy bleed kit, you know, oh, well, whatever, whatever. Live and learn, don't you? Anyway, um, so I've now put this battery in, which is hopefully going to get me there, or at least get me to another place what sells batteries. I could buy another one, because, you know, don't forget, I've got to drive this thing home as well. <laughs> okay, back on the road, eight miles to go. Obviously, one of the bigger problems that I've got is that it is rush hour, and there's just cars everywhere, and people have no sort of respect for the elderly you know this is an old girl and people are just like get out of the way get out of the way i 
and I'm like, I, I can't get out of the way because uh, nothing works. Everything works. <clears throat> so, uh, five miles to go. I'm concerned about getting back as well. I mean, I, I, it's everywhere's going to close, and what am I going to do for a battery if everywhere's closed? We are coming up now to the home of the Scimitar. We are on the vinegar strokes. We are very, very close. I can almost, I can almost see the buildings. You know, it looks like Scimitar factory land doesn't it it looks like we made it look how far we've come now baby Now, you may be thinking, eh, I'm sure this isn't the right place, but the <laughs> actual site where the cemeteries were built has been knocked down a long, long time ago, sadly. So we're at the next best thing. This is the next industrial estate over from where this was built. I think just over there, there's a housing estate and that's where the original factory was, just behind these units here. But I don't really want to stop and film this outside someone's house. So this is kind of the industrial part of Two Gates in Samworth where, you know, this thing, this thing came to be, you know, and I'm very glad it did. You know, she might not be looking her best there, but we've made it, you know. It's a bit of a shame, there's a couple of places around here that uh, apparently have street names named after Reliance, which is brilliant, isn't it? And I'd love to go and try and find them all, however, I, I'm, I'm going to be lucky if I get home in this thing, to be honest, never mind cruising around some housing estates. Now, um, what I will do though, is I will try and find them and share them on this bit of video editing that I'm gonna do right now, as I'm speaking to you. Look, you can see these names, isn't it great? So clever. Um, but yeah, so this, this has been a, a serious challenge for me. This has been, th this is the third day, essentially, of, of taking something that's been sat for 31 years, I've said it again, um, and returning it to the road in a you know fairly safe way um, everything works that needs to work it's just the clutch is a little bit dicky um, I'm happy to start it sort of semi in gear but eh, whatever um, this getting here was the, the main thing you know um, and yeah this this top has held up really well so um, I think it might have made the grade I might be selling these soon that'll be good won't it and yeah, the uh, exciting thing for me at the moment is that as of the 1st of March, I'm going to be trying to do this a little bit more full time. So at least five days a week, um, I'm going to be having available to do car resurrections, which, you know, it's a lot of fun. Um, I really enjoy doing them. I love taking something that, you know, all it takes is the wrong person to walk into a garage and go, Oh, scrap, and that's it, that, that car's gone to history. That, that work of art, that piece of art that someone spent so long making, lost to history, you know? So I have to rescue these things, I just have to do it. It's my nature. Um, so yeah, that's the exciting thing now. 
as of uh, next week I'm going to be doing a lot more and you know I'll have a bit more time so what do you want to see happen to this thing I don't really know to be honest I'm a little bit unsure I could do with selling it to get the money but equally you know should I spend £20,000 turning it into a V8 race car stick an LS3 in it I wouldn't mind doing that or do I give it a sympathetic restoration it's got potential hasn't it you know, maybe take you know a bit of a bit of a tidy up on the paintwork here and there. These scabby bits. Polish these wheels up. Who knows? Um, but what I do know is, thanks very much for watching. You've been incredible as always. I'm looking forward to seeing your comments and seeing what you think of this little resurrection episode, this long resurrection episode, and seeing if you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah. Just tell me, what, what shall I do with it? What shall I do with the car? Um, but for now, I'm going to drive off into the night and try and make it home. See you soon. Oh yeah, and uh, those with good eyes, if you've noticed why there's only three wheel bolts on each wheel, well, this wheel fell off. And I couldn't really record because I was at the middle of a busy junction, but yeah, uh, it fell off. <laughs> I think I must have not torqued the wheel bolts down correctly after I took it off to bleed the brakes and just completely forgot about it. Did the other side, went round and took one nut from each one and put them on here and that's enough to get me home. I hope.